How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today's video is going to be a bit of an introduction to The Forge. The Forge beta specifically because the actual expansion isn't out yet. Uh, so what is The Forge? Well, it is a cooperative event for Don't Starve Together in which six players enter an arena and attempt to defeat the ultimate boss in that arena. Uh, as you can see by the main menu here, we have a significantly different layout, don't we? Uh, for those wondering, how do you gain access to the the Forge uh, beta for Don't Starve Together, simply right click the game while in your Steam library, select the properties, and then select the beta tab in the properties menu that pops up. In that menu, that beta menu, there will be a drop down menu that will allow you to select between no beta, it's called opt out, or the forge. And when you select the forge, an update will download and after about 200 megabytes of data and the update being applied, you'll now have access to this glorious new main menu that we have here for Don't Starve Together. The forge is going to be a limited time event. This beta in particular is lasting a week and then the forge event itself is going to be lasting a total of three weeks according to Clay at the moment. Uh, one thing that should be noted before you get started, you probably are going to want to go ahead and disable any mods you have enabled for Don't Starve Together as they can cause a conflict with the Forge as an update. So obviously, now that we're here on the main menu, the big addition is Enter the Forge. So let's go ahead and uh, enter the Forge. As you can see right here, we're given a total of three options, uh, a quick match, a custom match, or we can browse servers. Uh, a quick match is going to match us up against it takes into account a few different uh, factors, I imagine. I don't know the specifics behind it, but generally it finds uh, one, one of the matches that you can get into the quickest that has a relatively good connection to your area. So it's, it's going to be generally a local server, but um, you have a lot less ability to pick and choose. Now, here we have a whole bunch of servers that are being hosted. Uh, you can browse through all of these. So you might be wondering, well, I thought it was made clear by Clay that these servers were going to be hosted, and it is. See, if you take a look at the details you know, here, you'll notice all these servers are dedicated, and the hosting itself is being done by Clay. Uh, so none of these are third-party servers, and I think the general idea behind this is that it will prevent any sort of cheating of the system, uh, because there are awards or rewards, I should say, being given out to players who complete it. So it makes sense that uh, Clay controls the the server and also it helps ensure uh, some quality because clay i don't know if you probably haven't seen it but they have many servers that are located uh throughout the world so if you live in any region if you live in australia if you live in canada if you live in the united states if you live in brazil uh, if you live in china if you live in europe uh, all of these areas have servers from clay so you should always be able to find a server with a decent connection regardless of where you live unless you live in some really obscure place that it simply doesn't have access to that kind of stuff. Uh, but most most countries are covered. So here is where you can browse them. Like these are all the different ones. And you can create your own. You can create a custom match, but it will take place on Clay's servers. Uh, rather than connecting peer-to-peer, -peer, like in standard Don't Starve Together, uh, all of the, the Forge event maps will be uh, hosted on Clay's server. So we can do a custom match here. And uh, let's just... Uh, this is just going to be a test. So we're going to do a test and... Uh, we're going to create that world, so it's a public public server, and uh, we're going to set it up. Now, this actually connects to Clay's uh, serving resources, as I said before, so we, uh, we're going to have to do that, set, a, set up our password. So this will allow you to go ahead and create private matches, so you don't have to worry about public lobbies all the time, which is a nice thing, but at the same time, I've had really positive results with the public lobbies. I have played about a total of five hours so far, and all of them have been with public players. There have been a few actors and you know players who just didn't want to cooperate, but by and large, it was a very positive experience, and I was usually able to get into a game within five minutes. So uh, at the moment, the, the public lobbies seem to be pretty good. Like if you don't have a group of friends that you play Don't Starve Together with, uh, be sure to check out the public lobbies. There's really nothing, nothing negative there that I've seen. So here we have our character select, and as you might notice, all of these characters, while they do feature in Don't Starve Together, they now have different traits. So obviously, like the health points are similar there, but um, in Wilson's case, his expertise is in darts, 
uh, melee and staves. And his special abilities in the forge are going to be his ability to revive allies at uh, twice the speed and restore three times more health when reviving allies. So that <laughs> this is really nice because um, I I've taken a lot of grief for Wilson over the years, haven't I? And it's nice to see that uh, Clay finally decided to make him useful in some regard. So let's just go ahead and select Wilson. <laughs> I mean, we could go through all the other characters, but so far I've uh, really only played Wilson, uh, WX, and uh, I think Wickerbottom? No, it was either Wickerbottom or Maxwell. But we're, we're going to play Wilson here. Uh, here you can change what your items are. Now these are the items that you unlock in the Forge because during the beta you're only going to have access to uh, the Forge items. Otherwise, after the beta ends, you should actually have access to your uh, original items as well. Uh, the you know the items that you earned while playing Don't Starve Together, standard Don't Starve Together. But here we are. Here we are. We're going to use the Challenger skin. And we're going to get ready, right? Okay, so here we are waiting for other players. Since this is a private, well, it's not really private, but it's a passworded match, I'm just going to start it with one player because you can do that. Uh, so for those of you who are actually worrying about uh, having to play with other players, no, you don't have to play with other players. You're probably going to get massacred almost immediately, though, because uh, the game is pretty relentless uh, if you just have if you're just playing by yourself. So here we are in the forge. As you'll notice, uh, our stats have been sort of reduced to a health meter. We have 150 health uh, and three items. We have our chest item, we have our head item, and we have our weapon. In our case, it's the barrage dart. You can see the battle, battle master Pugna's uh, little tirade going on there. Right there he is. And uh, this is his arena. This is where we're going to be doing our fighting. As you can see, it's a relatively contained area, but it has some interesting geography on it. These areas here that glow brightly, uh, they actually do not deal any damage, so you can walk safely over them. I personally would like to see that changed. I think they could add some more interesting features in it. And here we have our first enemy that comes out after us. And uh, let's be let's be fair. I'll probably just die to this because I'm. <laughs> I'm a ranged character, and if I'd played somebody who was melee, I could just tank all this damage, but I'm not going to have an opportunity here to really uh, do much of anything else. So, yeah. I'm sure somebody's going to figure out a way to do this solo, uh, but I haven't, so. In the, in the past, I've always played with about six other players, and this stuff is relatively easy with six other players. Uh, you can avoid these attacks uh, for these small boars. I don't, I don't, I forget what their names are. Uh, Clay usually comes up with some rather creative names for their creatures in the game, and it makes it easy to forget them. Uh, but you can avoid the majority of their attacks by walking in a, diag a diagonal, or a diamond shape, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm just going to, <laughs> we're gonna die here, so that way we can progress. I, I could have set up a bigger match, Let let's just see. As you can see, we're not taking too much damage, right? It took us a while to actually get murdered here, and we're being ganged up on, so that's what happens when you die. Uh, if you are actually playing with other players, you'll have the opportunity to be revived. The game, the match, doesn't actually end until all players have died, so uh, there's plenty of opportunity there to continue the game even when several of your players die. Uh, then after every game, you'll get experience based on your achievements in the game. My current experience is 5,236, and um, they'll usually they'll usually give you like uh, a rating. So in other words, my in my case, I was rated as being a distraction with 220 seconds of creature's attention. So it depends upon what you did that really stuck out in the game. It, it makes sense. And then we just continue on. We go back to our lobby, but we don't want to be in this lobby anymore. So we're actually going to disconnect. So let's disconnect from our little private lobby, uh, server lobby that we set up. And uh, now we're going to actually take a look at some of the spoils of our our failed match there because I didn't really earn anything. Uh, but in the past, I've, I've earned stuff. So if we go and take a look at our item collection now, we have the curio cabinet and the treasury. So the treasury is sort of a, a very new addition that's been introduced exclusively in the forge. And basically it'll give you Pugna's war chests in this event anyway. 
Uh, the Pugna's War Chests are given to you uh, after every match. I'm not exactly sure the criteria that allows you to gain more, if it's just based on successful matches or a certain number of experience or gaining additional levels, but I think to date have gotten around seven of these so far. And we can click the open chest button, and now we have the opportunity to open a chest. So if you're if you're familiar with a lot of trading card games, this stuff this kind of stuff is familiar. A lot of mobile games as well. And some people might actually be worried that Clay uh, would be going in a direction here that would start nickel, nickeling and diming. Is that, can I even say that? Would start to nickel and dime their loyal fan base. But um, f based on what I've read, they most certainly do not intend on doing that. And uh, all of these, these loot box, I don't know, is it a loot box? All of these treasure chests are relatively fairly distributed. And they're not going to try to course additional money out of you for them um th we'll get into that a little bit later but here we go we, we have various different cosmetics so in this case these are brawler's knuckle wraps i'm not exactly sure which characters those are for but here we have a profile icon here we have another profile icon and that's all four of them that was in that box so i got a shrugger uh emote let's go back still have Two other chests I could open up, but let's actually take a look at our curio cabinet. You can see it says new there because we have unlocked some new stuff. So I'm just looking at the characters here, the their, their wardrobes, and I really don't think I've actually unlocked anything new. But let's just take a look at some of the stuff and I'll show you like right here. Uh, for Maxwell, I unlocked the alchemist's hand wraps. So that was one of the the items that I got in one of my treasure chests or my war chests. In addition to the wardrobe, which allows you to customize the aesthetics of your characters, there's also a belongings tab. Uh, basically, you're probably familiar with this. It allows you to apply different skins to different items in the world. So, like, you'll probably be familiar with things like, uh, I don't know, the different, the different backpack skins. In the case of the Forge, it has introduced a whole bunch of uh, event-specific skins. So, the Forge introduced a lot of new items uh, for in-game while you're playing the forge match that you saw before like you saw the armor that I had on you saw the uh, blow gun that I was holding here you are you're allowed to get different skins for them basically in addition to the belongings we have emotes so I recently unlocked a new emote if I recall correctly what was it was it the shrug emote yes I think it was the shrug emote that's the one I unlocked with this most recent war chest uh, unboxing opening and basically once you have it you have it and you can type you know forward slash shrug to shrug during the game in addition to emotes we have emoticons that you can use by typing their corresponding uh, hypertext supertext what is that cut stuff called into the chat we have portrait frames, which allows you to change the background of your character. And then a profile icon allows you to change the little icon that's displayed next to your current level. So I'm level 9 and it allows me to put a little picture next to that. So I could I could have put Chester there because I'm unlocked Chester. Uh, some of these other ones I haven't unlocked though. So like you'll notice the difference is that um, for items you have, you're, you'll be able to unravel them. And for items you don't have, you'll be able to weave them. You might be a little bit curious and wondering exactly what does this do? Well, we have a new thing called Thread. Uh, actually, I'll cover vignettes first before we get to Thread. Uh, here we have vignettes. These basically change your uh, loading screen. So you can have Maxwell, Weber, you get the idea. But, like I said before, suppose I wanted, I really wanted this Weber loading screen, right? We can weave it, and to weave it costs uh, spools. Okay, how do we get spools, right? Well, you can take existing items that you have, maybe you have two of them, or you don't like that one, uh, like let's say this hammer, and we can go ahead and we can unravel that. And unraveling it will turn it into five spools. So we can go ahead and unravel it. And now we have 15 thread. I'm not exactly sure there's a whole lot we can buy for 15 thread. Yeah, we could buy one of these. We could buy, how about the vignettes? I think those cost more. Yeah, those cost 45. Uh, so we could, Let's take, a, let's take a look at something nice here. A lot, those cost a lot. So let's do profile icons and what is what is a very popular profile icon? Uh, we'll, we'll get the gnome. The gnome is a, a well-known status symbol in Don't Starve. So 
Let's go ahead and weave that. And as you can see, now it's unlocked. And we can we can select that. As we used our thread, and we can use the gnome as our profile icon. So that's how thread works. That's how all that stuff works. There is no way to actually buy spools. That is, a, that is a pretty obvious attack vector if Clay chose to exploit it, but from what I've heard, they don't intend on doing that. Uh, the trade-in is not available at the moment, and the shop is not open at the moment either. So you might be thinking, ah, the shop is where they're, they're going to start selling th spools. According to what Clay has announced, their plans are to actually sell the entire outfits for the characters and you can buy them at a set price. So you don't have to worry about having to buy spools and then converting them into this, that, and the other thing. Uh, you don't have to worry about buying loot boxes and essentially gambling to see if you get the good items that you actually want. You'll be able to buy them uh, pretty much uh, straight up. And uh, that's pretty nice. So that was a very preliminary introduction to some of the things that were introduced in the forge but now i'm actually going to go ahead and explain a little bit about the gameplay so when you enter the forge with the five other people that have supposedly come along to help you you'll see how helpful they are as the game goes on there are a couple of things that uh, have been established so far that you might want to keep in mind to make sure you have a more positive and productive experience uh, for one thing there are going to be different players that are sort of relegated to different roles. Uh, some players will be relegated sort of to the role of either tanking the enemies or serving to break their defenses because the enemies can enter a state where they actually are uh, immune to damage. In addition to that, we can have sort of player classes that are focused on healing because there's a healing staff in the game and healing you'll find out is very important. So if, if there's a healing staff that ever drops, please make sure that the player who gets it actually knows a thing or two about it, or be aware that uh, there is a, a the player who picks up that staff is going to be largely relied on to carry the rest of the team through the game. Uh, they need that person to heal them at the opportune times. In addition to those two, we sort of have the class of just uh, a standard DPS class, and the idea behind this class is they deal a lot of ranged damage, and they also have the ability to kite the enemies. So, by and large, the game is pretty simple. You'll probably get up to speed in a couple of hours. There's really no reason it should take longer than that. One really helpful tip that's probably going to allow you to get to the last boss in the game is remembering not to hit enemies when they are asleep in the healing radius. So when your healer throws down um, their little spell on the ground, that the area that will allow you to heal him, any enemies that enter that area are going to fall asleep. And if you don't bother them, they'll continue sleeping. So this gives you a nice reprieve from the battle, allows you to heal up a bit before jumping back into it. But you'll notice a lot of amateur players continue to aggro and attack the enemies that are sleeping. Uh, the same can, thing can happen with enemies that are petrified, but don't do that, basically, because it defeats the point of putting those enemies to sleep to begin with and petrifying those enemies. But you'll see a lot of... Uh, more novice players do that, and I'm just saying that can save a, they, both sides a lot of uh, headache if you just remember to not hit the enemies that are asleep in the healing radius and then not hit the enemies that are petrified, unless you can't help it. Without spoiling the event too much, I would just like to say that myself personally, I have seen the final boss in it, but I have not had the opportunity to you know, participate in defeating him yet. Like I said before, all of the matches that I was involved in were public matches, which basically means that uh, you, you don't really get to be too discriminatory about who ends up in your game, and if you don't have the right kind of team composition and teamwork, uh, it can easily fall apart for the last boss. So, one thing that people might be wondering is how does the forge tie into the standard don't starve together experience and the truth is this is an event that's uh, sort of a standalone from the standard don't starve together experience there is going to be no way to access the forge that i'm aware of from inside any game that you ha currently have in play or that you start again like a standard don't starve together game you're not going to be able to access this event uh, this event is accessed exclusively at the moment anyway because this this is the beta through the main menu right here so uh, this 
give us the give us fans of the series the opportunity to enjoy a much more arcade like experience because the matches in my experience have taken anywhere from uh, probably 10 to 20 minutes generally not longer than that it's also worth noting that the don't starve together the forge beta is only available on the PC. So if there are any players here that are watching that come from Xbox or mobile, well, there is no mobile version of Don't Starve Together, uh, but it, yeah, Xbox or PlayStation, you know, you're not going to have access to the Forge beta anytime soon as I'm aware. Like, I've not read any announcement that Clay made that hinted towards uh, a beta for the Forge for PS or xbox anytime soon so this is steam exclusive i i kind of forget that from time to time because don't starve just seems like a steam game to me uh, and i kind of forget that there are actually console versions of it out there that people play as with most things uh pc generally you get more options and in this case you get more betas i'm sorry that's just kind of the way it is but hopefully this introduction will allow you to get up to speed and start playing the forge relatively quickly so thank you very much for watching as always and i hope to see you next time